like after a month or so of that. <laughs> and we're live. <laughs> yeah, welcome to Around the TV Tray with Sarath Nay. That's my talk show that I made up because, well, why not, right? Exactly. Indeed. And what we're doing every single Tuesday night is uh, raising funds for the NOG and my fellow stand-up comedians in Daytona Beach. And eventually, once we get out of Daytona, I'll branch out to like Florida and all that stuff and get the rest of all the Florida comics. But we got twenty over 20 weeks of day, just Daytona, and I'm putting every single one of you on the map. Yeah. And we're also raising funds for the my fellow comedians like me not here and the Tiranog Irish Pub and getting them subscribers and likes all across the board. And um, also his YouTube channel is below this YouTube video. So please subscribe to his channel as well. It's so, entertaining, I swear. I swear it is. It's You'll so laugh. good. I, l I laugh all the time because of your videos are just the bees knees. <laughs> like the ones where you're um, like the Paul Walker one and like. <laughs> Bye, Vin Diesel. <laughs> <laughs> it gets me every time. I love those videos so much. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. You're welcome. So yeah, Mina, what um we started um uh, I when I moved to Con like uh, Daytona or Florida and did stand up, I got to meet you, and it's a huge honor that you're a blessing and and all that. And it states here in your bio that you were born in the same year as I was, but. Uh, Two months earlier, on the same date, even October twenty seventh, nineteen eighty two. Nice. Yeah, and um, you're Armenian, I'm Cambodian, so we're like on the same planet. Yeah, in a way. <laughs> <laughs> we are pretty foreign. <laughs> Indeed. So you're a stand-up comedian and an actor, and you co-host and DJ the uh, open mic at the Turnerlog Irish Pub uh, every Wednesday when we had it. So, what uh, inspired you to become a stand-up comedian? Uh, just, uh, I like the attention I was getting when I was younger and how, uh, quickly, like whenever I joke and hearing laughter and getting out of certain situations for me, like joking around and then, um, and then I started watching like stand up comedy and seeing like Chris Rock on stage. I remember bigger, blacker and uncut and I just something about seeing him on stage and how he had this like flow about him and like this timing and everything. And I just started to really study stand up because of him. And I was like, how can you remember all these like stories and all these clips and things and how, how, and then I started to notice how he would go from one topic to another and how he would use certain words from, you know, whatever he was talking about at first to go into the next thing. And I just was like, shit, dude, this is, this looks like fun. But yeah, I've always liked making people laugh. Indeed. And Chris Rock's been an actor as well. And so what inspired you to be an actor? Oh, to be a completely different person. To see, at first, it just was like, you know, just having fun. Just being silly. And then I started to really get into it and I started to study acting. And then I started to be like, you know what? What would me, Minas, be if I was that character? You know? And then go into that headspace and just live truthfully in that moment as that character. But it's me living as that character, you know? And I just, I just liked it. I just like going into another headspace, into another world, and just, it just, I just feel more alive that way. If that makes sense. It does. Yep. Well, which characters were your favorites that you had portrayed? Oh man, I'm glad you said so. Uh, let's see. I've done Macbeth twice, but it's the second time that I really enjoyed it because. The first time uh, was over at Daytona State College, and I, even though I got to be King the King in the play, it, he he dies like right away, and it's like a two three hour fucking play. So like in the first twenty minutes, I'm fucking dead, <laughs> and so the rest of the time is just me in the back, like not scoring at all. So it just it just was even worse. But the second time when I did it was very uh, pretty recent. And I played one of my favorite characters from the show, Macduff. 
and he's the one that where Mac- Macbeth uh, kills his wife and his children and like his uh, countrymen and all that. And he breaks. I got to one of the things I always wanted to do on stage because I always did comedy all the time. And finally got to do a serious role. And bro, every single night I broke down crying on cue because I, whenever I hear uh, the news of my, you know, my family and my uh, friends and everyone dead from the hands of Macbeth, I fucking die. I, like, I'm on stage crying. And it was one of the, it, it just felt so, I felt so alive and so raw and real. Like I got to show it an emotion that I never really show everyone all the time, you know? And uh, that, that was one. And the second one was uh, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. I played the chief. And that was really fun because 90% of the time I'm not saying anything on stage. Because if you're familiar with One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, the chief just sits there silently. And everyone thinks that he's de- or that he's just deaf and dumb. And uh, not deaf and dumb. He just doesn't speak. And uh, when, he, when he does speak, it's like a... <gasps> And dude, that was one of the coolest moments when it's the next scene. I'm sitting there. It's like in the middle of the play. I'm sitting there and the main character is next to me. And he looks at me and he hands me gum. And I just look at him. And the very first thing I say is I go, hmm, juicy fruit. The fucking <laughs> play, Dude, the place goes. <gasps> but uh, what I loved about that production was the director, one of the coolest guys I got to work with and um, just the whole team, everything about it was just so much fun. One floor of the Kugels. That's, that was probably one of the best uh, productions that I was part of for acting. So yeah, Macbeth and one floor over. Indeed. Good yeah. stuff. I, um, which um, venues have you performed in um, with your plays and as an actor? A lot of it's Daytona. Um, Daytona Playhouse, of course, was one. That's like when I first started outside of high school and uh, Daytona State College and all that. Of course, Daytona State College, like I said. Uh, uh, oh, Flagler Playhouse. I got to do uh, a really fun one called Sylvia, where I played a woman named Phyllis. I walk in to my friend's apartment, Kate, and I said, oh, my God, I love your apartment. But then I found out that she's got a dog. And she lets the dog run around and they sit on the couch and everything. I don't like. So I got to play a woman in this like really obscure off off Broadway play called Sylvia. That was fun at the Flagwood Playhouse. And then um, what's the other one? Ooh, I can't. Basically just the playhouses here and around town. That's the best way awesome. to put it now. Sweet. How did yeah. you become um, we have a viewer in the room and say hello a viewer and Hop in, the, uh, hop in the chat if you'd like to, and we'll answer all your questions and stuff like that. But be nice to us. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> so, um, how did you become the co-host and um, the DJ at the open mic nights at the Nog? That's uh, at first it was when when we all first started doing stand up. Zach, of course, was we all started at the same time, and uh, it just it just sort of morphed into. Zach and I just kind of being like, you know, like we play off each other very well. Why don't we just kind of co-host, you know, open mic together? But uh, for uh, but at the same time, like he's really the main host. Like it's 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 his thing. I'm just kind of glomming <laughs> on him. And I figured, you know what, dude? And plus, I love music, and it really annoys me whenever because uh, I've been through a few venues where DJs are just kind of like lame with it and i was like yo this is a fucking comedy club play some fucking funny music mix it up with pop music do something so i said fuck that i'm gonna grab a laptop i'm gonna become the dj because we need music especially intros for comedians coming up on stage because you know you've been to a lot of the stand-up comedies where it's just like they're like hey welcome next sir Nay," and it's like a, a you know clap there for a second and it's just silence while you're like trying to get up on you know get up on stage and stuff. And I was like, dude, you got to always, always have some kind of noise, always have music playing constantly. No pause, no, you know, it just livens up the show. So that's how, that's how I got into the whole thing. And then, uh, uh, all the little tricks and stuff that I do with the YouTube and 
because uh, if, if a lot of, I don't know whoever's going to be listening to this. If you ever seen me on stage, there's many times where I like, it looks like I'm not paying attention, but what I'm doing is I'll have like one uh, headphone in my ear and I'm skipping through like uh, the ads and stuff on YouTube. Like I'll put it you know, on mute and stuff and I'll just have to listen to it by myself and be like, okay. Or certain uh, points in the song where I want it to play after someone's done with their set. I'll sit there and listen to it and be like, okay, it's about two minutes and 11 seconds in. And then, you know, I'll have it all ready and everything. Sweet. Yeah, the um, our viewers, The Dead End, they are a Psycho Billy uh, 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 band from Pueblo, Colorado. And they're on the Disrupt Fest bill every, every year. So. Dude, um, Psycho Billy music rocks. Heck yeah. Hell give it up. Yeah. They give you, they're giving you a round of applause too. Oh, thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And so, um, my favorite's like when you and, and Zach get into it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. And then cracks me up. And, and you picked the right songs too. And it's so awesome. And, and I remember you playing like the Broadway musicals to start everything off. And, yup. Dude, I um, love show tunes. And I told Zach, he's, he's like, Man, play something good. Blah, 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 and I'm just like, Zach, <laughs> listen, I'm going to play. But at the same time, I got control of the fucking music. And I love show tunes. I'm going to play at least one, minimum one, maybe two or three <laughs> in the mix. Indeed. It's like the, the, the Christian like death metal band <laughs> that opened. Yeah, oh, man, that's a fun one. I get so excited because I'm like, hell yeah. <laughs> you know, and like... <laughs> The whole crowd gets into it, like the farm doors go crazy, and yeah, they normally yeah. don't go crazy. <laughs> Seeing some of the Orlando comics coming in, they go fucking nuts, dude. That's just fun. <laughs> yeah. There's no other place like the Nog. There really yeah, is. Wow. Oh man, indeed. And so you're part of the improv troupe called Random Acts of Insanity, and you perform every Tuesday night at the Cinematique. Like, how did you um uh, join forces with uh, uh, RAI? So about like I think they I think like maybe 14, 15 years ago, uh, the original leader, her name is Hillary Walker. She gathered up a bunch of people from her little like section at that time. It was DBCC, Daytona Beach Community College, and a bunch of her like Emory Riddle friends, and they all got together and created a troupe, Random Acts of Insanity. And about a year into it, she goes, uh, "We're gonna hold auditions for, you know." new new players and then i auditioned got in and ever since then i've been part of it but there, i mean there was a chunk of time i think like a good five years or so where i just kind of disappeared because i was doing my own thing but then i came back and then my very good friend andrew he became the new leader and i was like okay here we go and now we are where we are sweet and um during your time off you like to ref reflect on life and Wonder where have all the cowboys have gone? <laughs> yeah, I couldn't think of anything. I was like, uh, I'm just gonna write this. <laughs> oh man, I can tell you they're all in Colorado and Texas at the moment. And yeah. uh, with <laughs> Paula Cole, I think uh, they jumped yeah. into a time machine and did that. Where have all the cowboys gone? <laughs> But they probably miss us like the deserts miss the rain, you know, like oh, uh, yeah. everything but yeah. the girl from 1994. <laughs> I was just like, the, the first thing that came to mind was that, and like right after the Paula Cole thing, and I'm like, all these one hit wonders from the 90s, I sure miss them, you know, they're fantastic. Yeah. Oh, all man. Dance songs and all that. Like La Bouche. La Bouche. <laughs> 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 Indeed. So I like to like think of like um go back to like our very first time that I interviewed you and um yeah. pick out all those questions that I asked you and I asked you already the first uh, question that was on my mind which was like what inspired you to perform stand up comedy and so the second one was like um uh what was the feeling like when you first performed stand up? What the feeling was like? Mm -hmm. Oh man. Um, let's see. It's been. I uh, I was in New York at that time. I was visiting a friend, and I was very interested in doing stand up. And I figured, you know what? If I'm gonna start somewhere, I might as well start like in the lion's den. I told myself, 
And as I was visiting my buddy, I was like, hey, man, do you, you know, do you know of any places around here that does open mic? How do I get into it? Like, I don't know anything about it. So he explained it real fast. And he goes, yeah, there's and we were looking through, you know, the uh, phone decks and stuff and see what clubs are around. And then we came across one called Ha Comedy Club, like Ha Ha H.A. And it's like some fucking hole in the wall. I don't think it's there anymore. Like when I went last year to visit again, um, I don't remember seeing it. But uh, I remember being there. And that day was kind of weird to begin with because it would be like super sunny. And then all of a sudden, like it would rain hard. And then it just became cloudy. And then the sun came for a second and then clint. And, uh, and it just, I don't know, it just was like a drizzly weird day. So finally the club opens and then they were like, yeah, it's six bucks to do like five minutes or four minutes of stand up or something weird like that. And I just was like, ah, I got to pay for this, I guess. Um, so I'm sitting in the crowd and I had a whole thing in my head. Like, this is what I'm going to say. I had it all written down and I was nervous, nervous. Sarah, I was fucking nervous until the hostess gets up on stage and her very fucking first joke which helped ease me up big time because there was silence. She goes, oh, uh, how about the weather that we're having today, right? It's weird, huh? Don't you wish it was 9-11 again? <laughs> and the place, and dude, this was like, I want to say this was sh- fucking super shortly after that whole incident, you know? Mm-hmm. And she says it, and I just was like, what the fuck? And then the, everyone else was like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> And I sat there, I was like, I, how can you say that? I don't get it. And then I stopped and went, oh, because the weather was nice that day. <laughs> Stupid bitch. So she said it, she failed, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And there was a bunch of people that got up there before I did. And I'm sitting there going like, this is the New York comedy scene that like, I, in my head, I'm thinking of like Premium Blend and Comedy Central Presents and all this stuff. So I'm expecting that kind of show. And I sat there, I was like, this is amateur as fuck. Got up on stage, finally was my turn, and I just, the moment I got up on stage, I just went blank in my head. And the only jokes that I had, (laughs) the only joke that I had really written was, I was like, "Um, stairs are like kryptonite to fat people. And then I just stopped and I went, uh, (laughs) I don't know what else to say right now. And then my, my fall to, fall back joke was, explaining how my father has no idea what um salad tossing means <laughs> and i told him a story of how like i was sitting there the bowl of salad in front of me with the tongs in it and my sister sitting next to me and i don't know what the what compelled for me to do this like what came over me and i just went hey dad do you want me to toss the salad real fast <laughs> and he's like busy being angry armenian too and he's like yes go ahead toss salad and so i started to like toss it around and then i went man i really love tossing salad and my sister was like you need to stop <laughs> and i just kept doing it and then i would get louder and i went man i i'm really having fun tossing this salad and then my dad just goes toss salad the way you want to toss salad i don't care how you toss salad <laughs> and that's, that was like that was it that's so <laughs> awesome and then I, I, love- went, <laughs> I love when you talk about your dad on stage and like um with the aids and like- yes Oh God! Oh, everything man. you will, uh, everything there is AIDS, Minas. Please be careful. There is AIDS everywhere, Minas. <laughs> <I'm> like, okay. <laughs> it's so good. And like, yeah, I hang on to like every single word because like that joke, you know, goes on for a couple of minutes or yeah, so, yeah. like two or three minutes. But man, it's so good. It's so like it pulls you in, and it's just uh, so good. Oh man, and ah, oh, good stuff. And um. You mentioned that you did stand up in New York um, in the beginning, and like you went up there recently for a couple of months, I believe, and did. Like, yeah, it was uh, like four four months. I was up there. How was that like? Did it change at all? Dude, it was awesome. It it really was awesome. I loved the hustle. I loved the. Um, let's see. How can I explain it right? I loved the seriousness that was up there because you know everyone, they're paying for their time. They're, uh, everyone's focused in what they're doing and they all pay attention. Even, even if it's just comedians waiting for their moment to go on stage, they'll sit there and they'll listen to what you're saying. 
which I liked. Um, also, because of all the years that I've been doing stand up here and being able to close out shows, I was very confident in saying, like, okay, I can go up to New York. I think I can do this. And again, I got up there with that attitude, like, I'm very nervous. I don't know what I'm going to do. I think these guys are going to be, like, so much better and stuff. And I got up there and went, wow, you guys are just, like, the same. Like, it's not, you're not really that good. <laughs> I mean, some are not as good. Some were pretty good. But I just was like, okay, it's just another group of kids in a different state doing open mics. And uh, I met up with this one kid. His name is Gus Constantinalis. Dude, one of the funniest fucking guys I've ever met. And he helped me out big time and hooked me up with this place, uh, Broadway Comedy Club. And out of like 20 or so comics, I was like one of the five that got chosen to get residency at the place. So that was cool. But what sucked is that the res my residency wouldn't start until like the next month. And that's when I ne I had to come back because I just couldn't afford to live there anymore and not being able to find a job that fucking killed every, all aspects, whatever I was trying to do up there. But out of the four months to get that residency, to be able to be in an off, off Broadway play, to be, to make friends. Uh, I, I answered an ad where they needed people like uh, to do voices and stuff on stage and uh, to do different characters for a uh, script writing class. And from there, like, hooking up with this one kid his name is peter a really cool guy and he had his own like writing group that was like just making connections i was making connections i was able to do that i saw that i am funny enough for strangers that have no idea who i am and they're laughing fuck it like i said broadway comedy club dude i was just bathing in the laughter like after three months of just doing open mics paying for open mics scrounging around finding any place sometimes being the only comic on stage um i was thriving in, in front of a live audience i was like this is what i needed because like i said here in florida i was closing out shows i was um just doing a bunch of venues where it would be like more than 30 people you know so yeah it it, it was fun at the same time it was a little uh hectic like once i got back from New York, everything just went like I felt like I was constantly running, and then the moment I got back here, I went. Then I just stopped and went, "Whoa!" Everything just slowed down. Because <laughs> up there, it's like you better, you have to hustle. There's no, you can't just lo look, you know, goof around. You gotta keep going, keep going. Even just walking in the streets, you you can't just stop. You can't be an Asian tourist and just stop for a second and just stop looking around the buildings and you're like, stop! There's a flow. There's a traffic flow. You bitch, get out of the way. <laughs> that would be me. But luckily, you know, I can fly. But <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sure, no, you. I'm sure you know enough to, you know, stand to the side of the sidewalk instead of right in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, really. Fun. Earlier, you also mentioned that um, Chris Rock's Bigger and Blacker was one of, um, uh, you know, a, st a stand-up special that stood out. What are your other favorite specials that st stand out and comedy records, too? Okay. David Tell's Skanks for the Memories. That's one comedy special I thought was hilarious. The uh, album. Uh, all the Mitch Hedbergs. Um, let's see trying to think what i oh a lot of the early lewis black albums are really good actually like the first two albums after that it's just like the same time it's just him constantly going ah, democrats republicans and you're like okay we get it you're angry about that uh chris rocks stand-ups um eddie murphy uh let's i, I, I don't know right now i'm kind of blanking out on the other ones I probably I, I have like a whole thing of discs with a, a bunch of different albums. George Carlin, of course. Um, Don, oh, Don Rickles, uh, Hello Dummy, that's a good one. But yeah, awesome. And some of them are uh, actors, and um, they've been on TV and film. And I want to know what your favorite sitcom sketches and comedy films are. Oh damn, <laughs> uh, sitcoms. 
Well, Simpsons is always going to be my favorite. That's from the beginning, forever till the end of time. Seasons three through, uh, um, yeah, season three through seven. That's like the golden era of Simpsons for me. Uh, let's see, comedy. Oh, Upright Citizens Brigade. That was the show that I just, I was like, what is this improv? Like, that's the show that opened my eyes up to improv. That was hilarious. Upright it, it, Citizens Brigade, Strangers with Candy, one of my fucking favorite obscure comedy, dude. I loved it. As a young kid, uh, something about obscure comedy, it just, I caught on to it. Like, Tim and Eric, awesome show, great job. Something about it, I was like, I understand not every, it's not for everyone. I get it. Um, comedy shows, like uh, Arrested Development, I think is genius, that show. Oh, there's probably like so much more uh, to go through right now. Indeed, in comedy films. Comedy films. Hmm. I don't know what about this one, but what about it? Uh, what was it? The other guys with Will Ferrell and Mark Wahlberg. I'm not a huge like Mark Wahlberg fan. But I love Gary Sanchez production movies. And that's like Will Ferrell and them, basically. Dude, the other guys, something about that fucking movie, man, makes me fucking laugh all the time. From beginning to end. That one, Hot Rod with Andy Sandberg. And older ones like uh, that that I grew up, that a lot of my comedy comes out of is uh, Naked Gun and um, Airplane. Like those silly kind of comedies. Um yeah. Awesome. And if you can go on tour with any comedians, local and internationally known, which comedians would you go on tour with? <laughs> local Zach Bennett and Brian Ziola. <laughs> so I could finally be on tour with them. <laughs> uh, no one's going to get that. That's a, that's like a, a huge running joke between me and them. Uh, those guys would be actually fun to do comedy with, like to go on tour with. Uh, let's see. Dave Chappelle would be fun. Bill Burr, I guess. I mean, I don't know. A lot of those. At this, it's weird to ask me a question at this point in my life because I kind of like with this whole like Corona thing that's happening and like everything that's happening in this world. I just, I, I'm not, I'm not feeling funny anymore. If that makes sense. And I just kind of lost, I'm slowly losing interest. I'm not like 100% lost from it, but I feel like if, if I was, if you asked me this question in the height of my standup, I'd say like, definitely like, I'd love to go do things with Chappelle and all that. Cause I feel like I sort of would be able to carry myself on stage. And now I've just, I, because I haven't done it in such a long time, I'm just like, oh, I don't know about all this. <laughs> I don't know if I'm able. I but, feel um, like completely, yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, you know, you know, it, if it was, I would have loved to have done stage time and gone on tour around circa 2000, let's say 2007 to 8-ish, 9-ish, uh, Artie Lang with those, with those guys. I feel like I would have the time of my life to and party and, and hardcore drugs <laughs> uh, just those those dudes were wild and then like i'd hear how much they would get paid and stuff and i'm just like what like you got paid 30 grand for just one night what why am i not with you why am I, i'm better than like three of the comics that open up for you what the fuck <laughs> Indeed. And speaking of Rod Lang, um, if you go on YouTube right now, turn off your ad block and watch Dirty Work because it's on there for free. And Dude, Dirty Work's the best. And I it, it sort of annoys me when he talks shit about it. I'm just like, dude, you don't understand how big of a following we have. Like everybody loves that movie. I love Dirty Work. I think it's fucking hilarious. And he always shits on it. And I'm just like, dude, you need to stop. Indeed, especially like you know, with the the Saigon whore and but yeah, Saigon fine. whore bit my nose off. <laughs> <laughs> That's like always gonna be my favorite part. Yeah. 
<laughs> and then she bites it off again. <laughs> it's like, oh man. Um, and then if, if you can get roasted by five comedians, top five dead or alive, which ones like to get roasted by? To get roasted by. Oh damn. Let's see. Jeff Ross, of course. I'd like to hear. He's super professional roaster. Oh, um, Don Rickles. I'm, I'm sure he'd, he'd throw a few jabs here and there. I got to come up with five? Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. Don Rickles, Jeff Ross, Lisa Lampanelli, just to be like, all right, I get it. Just to see her, I guess. Uh, sure. Two more. Sarah Silverman. And one last comedian. Who would be a good roaster that would just fucking annihilate me? And I'd be okay with it. I can't think of it right now. No worries. And uh, where do you see, I know that you know, we're having a hard time doing stand-up now and, and we're not kind of like in the mood to do stand-up, but where do you see your comedy career in the next five years? I'm sure it's going to, I'm going to revive pretty soon. Like, I just, once all this settles out, uh, hopefully we'll, uh, in five years. Mm -hmm. I don't know, man. It's It's kind of a blank right now. But hopefully, if everything goes well and everything, and we all come back to somewhat normalcy, at least uh, playing like bigger venues, doing like uh, uh, playing with like three hundred people or plus, you know, stadiums and stuff, that'd be really fun. I got, I've only got to experience that once, and uh, that was <laughs> at the Daytona Playhouse. This one guy, his name is Rip, and he actually he actually talks like this. At first, like, I was in a play with this guy, and I thought he was doing the character from the beginning, and he was just staying in character. And then after the show, he's like, Minus, I just want to ask you, uh, I, you said that you do stand-up. Can you? And I stopped. I'm like, oh, my God, you actually fucking talk like that. Uh, he's like, can you do me a favor? Uh, I have a 30s theme show I'm going to be doing, a Christmas show. Can you do stand-up for that? It's like, sure. So, yeah, I got to do a 300 uh plus audience show where I got up there and I was like, hey, folks, how's everyone doing today? Like, I did this whole 30s, like, comedy routine thing. And it it, it could have gone a little better. I could have picked better jokes. There was one old lady that booed in the audience and it took, <laughs> dude, you know how, like, quickly we, like, our venom snaps back? Mm -hmm. But, dude, I, had, I stopped and I went and I just stared at her and I stopped and I looked around her and I saw that she had like grandkids and all these other kids are around the place because you know it's a family show <laughs> and I went in my head I was like you lucky cunt that I didn't say anything right now you little old bitch like I was going <laughs> to bury her and I just stopped went, <clears throat> and I just went back to the jokes I was saying anyway bah, 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 bah. <laughs> indeed and so um, you do stand up um, improv and acting and which other forms of comedy would you like to venture off into Writing would be fun. I want to at least write for SNL. That was kind of my main goal in life was to get on SNL for the longest time. And I figured through writing would be fun just to have sketches and then uh, slowly put myself in there and get up and get some TV time. But yeah, that's it. Indeed. And usually when I do like my interviews, I have like um, where they can find you on online and on social media, but it's already scrolling on the bottom. So yeah. subscribe and follow me and us on Instagram and uh, Snapchat. And you'll see, all kinds of, you'll see all kinds of bullshit. Indeed. <laughs> and you'll find his YouTube channel below this YouTube video. And um, where can um, what experience would you like your eyes to take with him after a set is over? Just. Uh... A different perspective on growing up as a foreigner and uh, how I saw things here different, like what I was used to growing up and then uh, comparing to the American lifestyle and American ways. 
Mm-hmm. And then I don't know, just like just opening up people's eyes a little bit to other cultures and other uh yeah. That's that's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> Indeed. And my final question will be, um, what ex- what is your favorite joke a comic has ever written? I kind of wish you asked me this or uh, let me know so I can prepare something. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, what's a joke? Okay. One I thought was insanely clever. We're going back to Chris Rock when he goes, uh, guns aren't we don't need gun control. We need bullet control. <laughs> and I stopped and went, that's actually kind of funny. And that makes sense. And he goes, "If and he said something, I'm, I don't want to butcher it, but he says something like, if bullets cost like three grand each. And then uh, he talked about how like people, people would think about shooting someone because then they'd have to like go back and be like, uh, I believe you got my property. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the whole bullet control thing with Chris Rock, I think that's probably one of the funniest things that stands out in my mind. Absolutely. Are there any other final shout outs you'd like to give out there on YouTube land and the internet? Uh there is a group, there's a YouTube channel called And You. They are based out of the land. I've done a a few parody shorts with them. Really funny guys. And I got to be in a a few of their feature films. Uh, Very smart. They fuse up a lot of like, they'll take a, one of the things I did was they took the Hobbit and they took Hunger Games and they fused it up and made it the the Hobbit games. (laughs) And uh, things like that. And they're very, very good with their graphics and all that, like with with what they have, I'm just like, this is fucking professional. You guys are good. They're called And You Films. And, uh, yeah, you'll see. You'll see it all. Diary of a Wimpy Alien is, like, <laughs> their most popular thing right now. And, of course, it's Diary of a Wimpy Kid, but it's Alien. And, and it's this kid going, it's an, an alien kid going, ah, no one has, I'm never popular. Bye. And then, like, alien things happen, you know. It's good. Indeed. So yeah, I shout love- out to them. Awesome. My favorite thing is when you match us up like um on like X Men cards and like the oh, two yeah, yeah, Wong yeah. Fu in Photoshop and Yeah, the Photoshop stuff is always fun. Indeed. And I love your video mashups as you mentioned earlier with like the Paul Walker and like <laughs> yeah. they just get me every time and the oh man, just subscribe to me and us's channel on YouTube and you'll see what I mean. There's just- there's more coming up for sure. I've been slowly like trying to find certain uh, backgrounds and stuff to fit for certain uh, jokes and scenes. <laughs> it's going to be good. And those um, street joke ones. Oh man. They... Yeah. I, I, I'll be going back to those pretty soon for sure. I sure hope so. They get, they get me every time. I share them every single Just time. I editing, see them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> good stuff. And so as I mentioned earlier, um, every Tuesday night on around the TV tray with Srathne, I'm raising funds for my fellow standup comics out of Daytona beach. And my favorite venue, the Trinidad Irish Pub, our homeroom um, during quarantine. Um, it's, it's, if you can, donate to their PayPal's and Venmo's and all that good stuff. And follow them on all the social medias as scri- scrolling below and in the YouTube description box below as well. I'm Srethne for Minas. This has been Around the TV Tray with Srethne, and we'll see you next week. See ya. Awesome.